Welcome to the Online Graduate Research Forum for Fall 2018. My name is Leanne Burnell, your presenter. I am a graduate student in the Masters of Science and Interdisciplinary Studies program in the Department of Occupational Workforce and Leadership Studies. The title of my research study is Teacher Turnover in Low-Income Schools, Organizational Deficiencies as a Cause and the Impact on Student Achievement. As a teacher in the public school system, I have taught in both low-income schools and schools in more affluent areas. I've witnessed the higher rates of, turn of teacher turnover firsthand. I was excited to pursue this research study to identify the organizational deficiencies that contribute to the higher rates of teacher turnover in low-income schools because I know that my colleagues and I did not leave positions at low-income schools due to the student population and the surrounding community. There were gaps in support caused by system deficiencies. These gaps in support led to teacher dissatisfaction. This research study looks into those deficiencies that are more prevalent in low-income schools and how they contribute to teacher turnover. The purpose of this study was to examine the prevalence and causes of teacher turnover in low-income schools by analyzing the statistical information achieved from school information reports, climate surveys, and student data surveys. By utilizing statistical data, such as test scores and graduation rates, this quantitative research examined how the quality of education received by the students attending these schools is impacted. Three research questions guided this study. What is the occurrence of high teacher turnover in low-income schools? What are the underlying organizational causes of higher teacher turnover rates? And how does higher teacher turnover negatively impact student achievement and improvement? This study included a population of Central Texas teachers who currently or have previously worked in a high poverty school that has also faced low student performance. Geographically, these schools were situated both in urban and rural areas. Currently, data has been gathered from individuals in mostly urban and suburban settings. A targeted sample method was used in this research. Teachers who currently work or have previously worked at low-income, low-achieving schools were asked to participate in this study. Initially, a criteria sampling was used to select sample participants with email survey requests targeting teachers at schools making up the specific demographic profile as previously established. Additionally, sample participants were also targeted at professional development days at various elementary school campuses. The data reflects the completed usable surveys of the 247 research participants. The participants were current teachers of three Central Texas area school districts, with varying years of overall teaching experience, grade level experience, and experience in low income schools. Data collection was comprised of a 13 item survey used to acquire data from teachers and staff of all three districts. A request for participation was sent via email to 456 potential respondents and the survey was accessible through a SurveyMonkey external link to protect confidentiality. Of the 456 individuals contacted via email, 152 respondents completed the survey. This same survey was also distributed via paper-based administration on an elementary school campus in one district during a professional development day with 96 possible participants. 89 surveys were completed and returned. An additional in-person administration of the paper-based survey was completed in the same district during a district-wide professional development day involving pre-K, kinder, and first grade teachers from several elementary campuses. A total of 621 teachers attended the training. 154 surveys were distributed and 80 surveys were completed and returned. Both in-person administrations of the survey instrument yielded 169 completed surveys. With a potential for 1,173 respondents and an actual 320 respondents, the response rate is 27.4%. Adjusting this number for the 247 usable completed surveys shifts the return rate to 21%. The survey included five survey items requesting basic demographic information from the professional, such as years employed in education, years at profile campus, and in current teaching assignment. The remaining eight survey items use Likert type items to assess the subject satisfaction with the organizational systems on their campus how likely the subjects will return to their current campuses next year, and how likely the subjects remain in the field of education altogether. Participants responded to the survey with maintained anonymity. Data acquired from the survey was used to establish relationships between the organization deficiencies leading to teacher turnover and how likely these organizational deficiencies are to be responsible for the chronic turnover in low-income, low-performing schools. 
The study used descriptive statistics of the sample set, including years of total service, years in current assignment, and previous experience in low-income schools. Statistical tests to analyze the data include calculating for median and mode to illustrate the frequency of responses for a given category, central tendency, and frequencies for variability. Thematic analysis was also used to establish associations between organizational deficiencies and the possible impact on teacher turnover. The first major finding from the study is that the majority of teachers with experience in low-income schools no longer teach in low-income schools. Of the 321 total respondents, 247 reported previous employment as an educator in a school identified as a low-income school. 74% of participants who had experience in low-income schools are no longer employed in low-income schools. This finding supports previous research that teachers do not stay at low-income schools. The teachers surveyed for this research are not leaving the profession, rather leaving low-income schools. This shifts the resource of quality, more experienced educator, educators to more affluent schools. If the majority of educators leave low-income schools, there will be a constant need to hire new teachers in these schools. The second major finding from this research study is that a lack of adequate principal support and useful professional development opportunity were identified as leading causes of teacher dissatisfaction. The study reports an overall dissatisfaction with the support and systems in place for educators in low-income schools. The greatest level of dissatisfaction for educators in low-income schools was the area of useful professional development. 56 participants were dissatisfied with the support provided by their principal when employed at a low-income school. 75% of participants were dissatisfied with the amount of useful professional development provided to them when they were employed at a low-income school. These findings implicate the cause of dissatisfaction among teachers is rooted in systems implemented at a campus or district level and can therefore be changed to address the level of dissatisfaction. The third major finding from the study is that teachers expressed enjoyment in serving a low-income community. A majority of teachers responded that they enjoyed working with students and a community served by the low-income schools. This finding supports previous literature that teachers do not leave low-income schools because of the community they serve. If teacher dissatisfaction is rooted in specific systems at the campus and district level and not due to the community, then systems can be altered to increase teacher support and satisfaction. These findings provide low-income schools a starting point in which to address the discontent of their teachers in an attempt to increase retention. These are organizational systems which can be addressed at even a campus level. Policy can be implemented to allow teachers time for professional development without penalty. Selecting and hiring appropriate administration for low-income campuses is crucial to creating an environment of support for teachers. My study was limited by the participant sample and by the research design and methods. Given these limitations, I recommend that future research examine a participant sample that includes educators who have experience in low-income schools and who have since left the field of education. I also recommend including campus administrators in the participant sample to gain a more holistic view of the challenges of teacher turnover in low-income schools. To further address the limitation of the research design, I recommend future research include a qualitative approach. A deeper qualitative approach could reveal prevalent themes in organizational deficiencies and teacher turnover. These themes could tie in closely to the impact both factors have on student achievement. Two future research questions could include, what systems facilitate adequate principal support in low-income schools? How can teacher involvement in establishing campus systems lead to greater teacher satisfaction and lower teacher turnover in low-income schools? Future research surrounding a deeper look into the establishing and sustaining of viable support systems in low-income schools will begin to address persistent teacher turnover. The implementation of proven support systems can provide low-income schools with a foundation at addressing teacher turnover. These schools can then begin to close the equity gap in education. Achievement in education should not just be for the more affluent. Continued future research into addressing the organizational de deficiencies in low-income schools will help better public education for all. I have prepared a manuscript of this research study for possible peer review in Education Policy Analysis Archives. On the YouTube page below, please indicate your anonymous preference for this study by clicking on one of the two icons. In addition, please post your comments or questions in the YouTube comment section below. I will respond to inquiries posted from November 16th through the 30th on this webpage. Thank you.